In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your door lock actuator located inside the sliding rear door of this Dodge Grand Caravan. Let's get started. The first step will be to remove this trim panel. Grab it from the top and pop it out. If you can't do it by hand, grab a trim tool, stick it here, make sure it's a plastic trim tool so you don't damage this area, and pry it out. It just has a few clips that it clips on with. Unplug the window switch. Take a T20 Torx bit and remove this screw. At the back here, there's a corner piece that needs to actually slide out that way. I'm gonna use my trim tool. There we go. All right. Now the rest of the door panel is just held on with plastic clips. So grab onto it or use a trim tool and pop it off. Go. There we go. I have the door closed so I can get better, better grip on here. There's one more push clip on this side that needs to pop. All right. Well, there's the door panel. Take a pick and pop this retainer off for the door lock cable or door lock rod, I should say like that and then pop the rod out set that aside now there are three 10 millimeter bolts one here one here and one on the other side remove all three there are actually two more t20 screws that we have to remove now to free up the door handle you still have a cable connected to this door handle unhook it from there flip it over and you'll see exactly where it mounts. To get this cable out of here, we have to pry on these little tabs inward, kind of squeeze them together, and this should allow the cable to pop out, just like that. Slide it out through the opening. On the back side, you'll see where the cable goes through this mechanism. Line it up with the slot and pop the cable out. Okay. On the back side of this rear sliding door, you'll see three T30 Torx bolts that hold on this rear door latch. Let's take all three out so we can free up the latch internally. Now you have two options for removing this panel here. You can either take the seal out at the top here and then you can access two mounting nuts, 10 millimeter each for the bolts that are the studs that hold on the window onto the regulator, or you can do it the way I'm about to do it, and that is to remove the regulator off of this panel and let it sit back there and then remove the panel. Regardless of which option you choose, the window will have to be supported. So let's tape up the window, that way it doesn't fall down into the door as we disconnect things. To hold up this window, I use some painter's tape. I recommend doing the same. If you use anything else, you're most likely going to have to clean up some sticky residue, kind of like this, on the window once you're done. Painter's tape will not leave that behind, but it will still hold the window very well. I put on four strips of about one inch wide tape. I don't recommend going any narrower than this because it can break easily, but you can always use wider tape and use less strips of it. Now there are four T30 bolts that hold the regulator onto this panel. Remove all wiring from the panel. You can't unplug that, but we're gonna leave that attached for now. Use a trim tool to pop this one out at the bottom. Just has a retainer. There we go. That clears things up nicely. Pull the cables out over here. Spin this piece around and uh, just open it up by prying these two tabs. Once you get that open, you can disconnect the cables that go to the front latches. One of them already popped out. this off. Use a T30, remove all three screws that hold the motor onto this panel. Let's pry it off. Now use a 10 millimeter socket, remove all the bolts that hold this panel onto the door. Now 
Now you can pry this panel off of here. Now as I pull this panel off, I'm gonna pull it out, but also backwards towards the back of the vehicle. This will unlock some clips that are in this area. I'm also gonna take off this bolt that has this ground wire on it, 10 millimeter socket. Okay. Once you slide that back, it should just pop out of here. So I'll push this cable through here, and then push this cable through here. Slide this forward. So this is what we were fighting the whole time. Uh, now my piece is a little bit looser than, than it should be uh, at this point. It should still be attached to that latch. It either broke free from wiggling it back and forth uh, or someone's been in here and it's uh, partially broken. But regardless, this is these are the slots that you have to fit the panel through as you pry back. There's also a little clip here, a tab that if you pry, you pry inward on the tab or you pry out on this and that'll unhook. And then, I mean, my piece isn't supposed to come off at this point, but it looks like it wants to, so might as well get it out of the way. Okay, so there it is. Once again, not supposed to come off at this point, but it did. Now to make things easier, we have to unbolt the rear window track. If you look towards the bottom of the door on the rear here, you'll see a 10 millimeter bolt. Put a socket on it and remove it. And this one's a little more trickier to see, but right behind this top hinge, there will be another one right over here, also 10 millimeter. This also holds the window track. Okay, so with those taken out, we can move the track around to maneuver the latch assembly out of there. Now, you should be able to grab the latch assembly here, twist it, turn it, and squeeze it past the uh, window track. There we go. All right, and there it is. There's the, uh, the assembly. Now we have to get the actuator off of this assembly. I'm gonna unplug it first on the back here. And if you just press on that tab, you should be able to pop that off. Has a rod, a lock rod that goes through it. Pop that out and then flip this over. And on the front side of it, you'll see this T15 Torx bolt. Let's remove this and that should allow us to remove this lock actuator. Slide it back straight back and there you go and there is your actuator now to reinstall this get your new actuator you're going to want to line it up with everything but at the same time on this side you have to make sure that it hooks into this pivot point so slide that in first and then make sure that on this side it lines up and to lock it all in we're going to put the torx screw back into the hole Thread it in by hand and snug it up. It's just going into plastic. It's very small, so just snug it. Reconnect the electrical connector. Make sure that clicks. And on this side, we're gonna put the rod into this orange retainer. Okay, line it up, snap it in. The reassembly can be done in multiple different ways. What I'm going to choose is to reattach this bracket onto the door latch assembly, slide the whole unit in, and then put the door panel on. These two slots, top and bottom, line up with these two pins on this bracket. So slide them in and then backwards to lock them. They do have a little locking tab. This one's broken for me. Someone's clearly been in here before. And uh, this one at the top is kind of weak. So hopefully it stays, it should. Um, this wire at the top should also be clipped onto this retainer just so it doesn't get caught in the window. And now we're going to have to basically maneuver this entire thing into the door. Now I'm going to take the assembly that I just put together and slide it into the door. I'm going to keep this all well, together still. Well, this fell off and it keeps not wanting to stay on mostly because my 
my uh, retainer tab here is broken. You should be able to keep it on. It looks like mine literally will keep falling off until this is secured in there. So I'm going to keep it off. I got that in. Slide this bracket back in here, and uh, you're gonna have to hook it back onto that door latch assembly. All right, well, after a lot of struggle, it's in. It doesn't stay on very well, just like it didn't where we took it off. That's why it fell off on me when it wasn't supposed to. Like I said, it is damaged already. Let's, let's get this window track bolted back on here. Tighten this up. Get the upper one reattached as well. Now let's get these door latch bolts started on the outside of the door. And with these started, snug them all up. That's nice and snug. Now we have to get this inner door panel back on and it has to line up with a lot of things. Cables, window regulator, this bracket here. The hardest part is gonna be this bracket. Make sure all of your cables are routed through and uh, all the grommets are seated. This one right here, I can't do that until the end, uh, but that's all right. Make sure your wires on there aren't gonna get pinched. I'm gonna seat this grommet back in here. Well, after a lot of struggling, I got that clip or the, the bracket to hook in. I'm gonna start in all the bolts that surround this panel so I can have it secured. And then, uh, then I'm gonna put that regulator on, but I want this to sit flat up against the door. Remember that one at the top was going through the inner door handle. So I'm gonna skip that one for now. As we reconnect this harness, don't forget about this ground wire here, the 10 millimeter bolt. If you don't connect this, it will not operate the door. Now, the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to line these up. I'm gonna thread in bolts, but only so I can hold this in place until it fully seats itself. In these two areas right here, there are some pins that need to line up. Once those line up, you can thread in the bolts that hold the regulator in place. And you can take these out. Now you can put that motor on, line up the splines, put in the bolts. Don't make them too tight, they're screwing into plastic. If you over tighten them, you'll strip the plastic and then they can't get tight. And on this side, I'm gonna take a pick and put it through so I can, yep, there we go, that just popped in. That way I can line up this regulator. Put the bottom one in, tighten this one as well. Now let's get these cables reconnected this piece back on its track here, snap this cable back down, and these cables have to uh, get snapped into here, but before I do that, I'm gonna slide them into their retainer, this white piece. You kinda have to do all that together. And then this other one that came from the bottom of the door, this one came from the top, just like that. So this is what your setup is supposed to look like once you're done. 
There we go. That operates. This should simulate the door handle being pulled. And close this up. Let's reroute this wiring harness, clip it onto all of its retainers, and plug in the window motor. Make sure it clicks. At this point, because the window is secured again on the regulator, let's remove the tape. Now let's close this back up. Make sure it's sealed up nicely. Now before we reattach this door handle, we're gonna have to put this cable through. So what you wanna do is latch this onto the retainer here, press it down, and then slide it through this cutout. Once it slides through, press it till it pops in. Now, line this up, start in the three 10 millimeter headed bolts, just because these are a lot easier to start than the smaller Torx bolts. I'm gonna snug these up just a little. And since those are not fully tightened yet, I'm gonna start the smaller bolts. Now I can snug up the bigger ones. Let's put this lock rod through. Just like that. Push the clip over. Lock it in. Perfect. Now bring in your door panel. Make sure the wires go through. Actually, you can just connect them at this point to the window switch. You're gonna wanna line this up. Get that door a little bit closer. Once all the push clips are lined up, make sure it hooks in at the top here. You can tap it in place. Put this screw back in. Take this cover, fit it over the inner door handle, snap it back into place. And lastly, this piece right here. And there we go. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.